I think we all know how annoying and painful it is to be wearing wrong size shoes. It either slips off when it's too large or causes blisters when it's too tight. Trust me, if you experience any of these, it's best to just get rid of them because Wearing this type of shoes for a prolonged period of time is going to cause permanent foot problems. But don't worry, in today's video, I'm going to let you in on 4 tips on how your shoes should properly fit, as well as what to look out for for the perfect fit. Let's go! Tip number 1, always measure your feet. Alright, so you're a size 10 at Nikes. But that doesn't mean you're a size 10 at Adidas. I actually wear a size 10 at Nikes and a size 9.5 for Adidas. And what I mean for shoe types is, if you're wearing a size 10 for a pair of leather oxfords, that doesn't mean you're a size 10 for sneakers. Also, be sure to get both feet measured because most of us have one foot that is larger than the other and always go for the size for the larger foot. I'd also recommend that you get your feet measured later in the day or during the evenings because our feet will actually swell up throughout the day from increased blood circulation from walking or standing up all day, so keep that in mind. Tip number two, stand up when you're trying on shoes. Many people make this mistake. They sit down, the salesperson comes over and hands them the shoe they want. They try them on, seat it down, and it fits perfectly. They pull the trigger, they try them on the next day, only to realize that the shoes doesn't fit perfectly. And the reason for this is when you're standing up, there's an even distribution of force down to your feet, which actually causes your feet to be wider when you're standing up compared to when you're sitting down. So when you're trying on shoes, don't rush the process, walk around in the store and be sure that it's actually comfortable and have no signs of rub and shave. Tip number three, Keep in mind the thickness of your socks. Another mistake that many people tend to make is they don't consider the thickness of the sock when you're purchasing a pair of shoes. For example, if you're wearing winter boots, you're most definitely going to be pairing it with thick socks that are made out of wool, while for sneakers, you're genuinely going to be wearing it with thinner socks. So to prevent this from happening, just bring socks you would normally wear with those shoes because it's honestly going to make a massive difference. And tip number four, don't count on your shoes stretching over time. Ever heard of a salesperson saying, don't worry, these shoes are going to expand and stretch over time. Guys, this is only applicable for leather shoes and the expansion is not going to be more than half an inch. So don't expect your shoes to magically expand a size or two. So remember to always fit true to size and do not go a size smaller just to accommodate the expansion. Now that we've covered those tips, how should your shoes properly fit? To make it simple, I'm going to split it up into three parts, the front, the back and the width. Starting with the front, there should be about half an inch between your longest toe and the end of your shoes. Keep in mind your big toe does not automatically mean your longest toe, so always best to try on the shoes and see how it feels on your feet. So moving on to the back, you want to make sure that there's no tightness against the back of your heel. Yeah, you already know that's only going to cause skin irritation and blisters. A good guideline here is to have about 1 8th of an inch between the back of your heel and your shoes. A cool hack here is to use the finger trick. Ideally, you should be able to insert your index finger between your heel and the heel of your shoes. If it fits snugly, it's a good indication that the fit is just right. If it's too tight, where you can barely insert your index finger or you're forcing a way in, chances are you're going to need a larger size. Or if it's too loose where you can insert two to three fingers, that's going to be a massive warning sign. Get a size smaller. Another indicator of perfect at the back is slippage. When there's excessive slippage when you're walking around your shoes, that's a clear warning sign that your shoes are too large. Lastly, the width, which is neglected by many. I'm not sure if you know this, but there are different types of feet when it comes to width. There's the wide feet, medium feet and narrow feet. So a simple guideline here is to be sure the widest part of your feet, which is this measurement right here, should roughly match the widest part of your shoes. And just like the front, don't take anything by chance and try them on and see how you feel. And guys, remember that fit should always be your top priority because despite having the best looking shoe out there, if they don't fit, you and your wallet are gonna suffer. So that's it for a quick video. Hope you learned something new today. And if you did, be sure to like, subscribe, and smash that notification bell. And I'll see you guys in the next one. As always, stay dapper.